All right, in this section, I'm going to take you through several different um, classrooms. And this is, uh, we've called these classroom video visits. On the whole, they're um, full scale lessons at lots of different grade levels, from younger children to high school level. And they deal with all different content areas as well. So those core mathematics ideas that you can see in the Tools for Educators are represented here. If I click, for example, on public lessons, I can see that these begin in fourth grade with Becca Sherman, proceed through proportions and ratios at fifth grade, multiple representations of numeric patterning in fifth and sixth grade, area and perimeter, and moreover, proof around area and perimeter in seventh grade, algebraic equations, inequalities, and properties in seventh grade, comparing linear functions in seventh and eighth grade, exploring quadratic functions in 9th, 10th, and 11th grade, and proving properties of quadrilaterals in 9th and 10th grade. These are lots of different settings, different school districts, different student populations, but I think that all of these teachers have um, taken that brave step of making their classroom practices public. Not a one of these teachers is someone who would refer to him or herself as um, an expert. Uh, they've been teaching for anywhere from you know several years to a few decades and but they're all continually committed to refining their capacity to serve their students so I think that these practices are very strong and I've learned a great deal from all of these teachers so I'll take you through each of these teachers so that you get a sense of um, how this mathematics understanding also is building as the students get older we'll begin by looking at number operations in fourth grade this is a lesson taught by Becca Sherman, who is a teacher and a mathematics coach. And she's teaching this lesson uh, basically to address a um, series of misconceptions that they were finding in their fifth grade students at this school. Um, they were struggling with these story, story problems requiring addition. And so then Becca, Linda Fisher, and her some of her other colleagues were looking at um, how to build the understanding of the fourth grade students in a more robust way so that they can get them ready for that fifth grade level math. So they're using in this lesson the Singapore Bar model and it's as you look at this that they're asking students to draw a math picture. Now again um, as you'll see when they go through Becca is careful to say look we're not saying if we have a story problem in involving Alyssa and Wayne uh, that you need to draw what Alyssa's hair looks like or what Wayne what Wayne's shoes look like um, but that you need to be able to represent the numbers that are going on in this in this problem as she starts uh, she engages these students in a couple different uh, problems she has them both in a small group or in a whole group and then she has them working at their tables while she's circulating around the classroom um, she provides some closure for the lesson and then debriefs this lesson with uh, her mathematics colleagues. There's also an entire set of the student work that was generated as part of this lesson. So as you go through you can say alright uh, so if Maria saved $24 and she saved three times as much as Wayne how do children represent that problem? Uh, <laughs> you can see that this student in particular has drawn some kind of interesting hair on Wayne but is also representing the numbers in interesting ways. So as you cycle through you can see this entire set of student work samples and how are these students starting to use the Singapore bar model to represent the math that's going on in this problem or this set of problems. You can imagine that if you're a teacher you can you can compare your students work to this task. You could um, just use this whole set of student work and just look at it and say how does this represent what fourth graders are able to understand um, with these concepts and how does that relate to my work with either younger children or older children. Um, if you go through you can also see uh, a video transcript. You could print the entire set of student work samples, um, sets one and two. As you go through these, and I'm not going to play the videos for you as I go through, but I invite you to, each of these videos, um, because we know that especially younger children can be difficult to understand uh, as they are uh, speaking, especially in a whole group setting. Um, so we have transcribed uh, most of the videos on this website. When we have older children who are um, 
speaking more clearly and are way more audible, we have not chosen to transcribe those videos for your use. But in this case, there is a transcript available. Um, and so you, she sets these students up and takes them through a multiplication and division task. The essential question here, of course, is, is a picture worth a thousand words? How can we use these pictures to condense the key ideas in this mathematical lesson and this content area? As you go through, I want to call your attention to the fact that these areas, so the introduction for this lesson, for example, has both Part A and Part B up here. Uh, then similarly, if I jump to Problem 1, that also has a Part A and a Part B. So as you watch this lesson, I do want to invite you to explore both of these parts of each of these sections. There's quite a bit of video for each of these lessons. Um, and you can see how her commentary uh, on this lesson pro progresses over time, as well as, again, that video transcript that will help you understand these uh, younger children in their classroom setting. So I'm going to go back up to this uh, public lesson. And again, this she sets the context for this. You know, how did she and her colleagues develop this lesson? What was their rationale? And what's that mathematical focus of this lesson? So you can con uh, basically go back and forth between these materials and see what was the rationale that she and her colleagues used to develop this learning opportunity for their students. We will now go on to a fifth grade, the first fifth grade example uh, in the public lessons. <coughs> and that's the proportions and ratios. I've talked a little bit about uh, Hillary Lewis Wolfson, but again, this is the Candy's task, which is one of the mathematics tasks having to do with proportion and ratio. You can go through all of these materials, um, and then you can also just jump to the lesson video. And in this task, uh, her setting is an interesting one. Uh, because a lot of these students are multilingual, and so uh, just it's just an interesting part of the context for her mathematics work here. Um, but you can jump through and see both Linda Fisher and her colleague uh, Carolyn and Hillary working on planning out this lesson, and then jump into the lesson itself. <clears throat> just like with Becca, uh, she introduces this task. This is the second time they've... Uh, visited the idea of proportions and ratios around this task and what she's asking her students to do in this lesson is evaluate the strategies used by students in the classroom uh, and so throughout you'll see the students examining different examples that she puts up on the board and saying well what was this student thinking what were they correct were they incorrect why what recommendations would you give to this student if you were going to point them in the right direction and so on uh, interestingly, there's also um, all of these, uh, the same, the implications for instruction, all of these student understandings and misunderstandings and so on. Uh, and then because this was a public lesson in the, um, in the sort of context of Japanese lesson study, there is this large conversation with, I want to say, as many as 10 or more teachers who were observing this lesson. And they can chime in in parts A, B, C, D, E, F, and G of this half an hour long debrief among the teachers who are observing the lesson, including the regular classroom teacher. So Hillary is teaching this lesson to a group of students who are at her same school but in the year before. Um, and so she knows some of these students, but uh, this was her chance to sort of get at how's, what's their understanding of proportion and ratio. But what's interesting is in this debrief, you're able to see what the regular classroom teacher observed in these students that she knows really well when they were being taught a lesson by a different colleague. So as you go through, you can go through not just the lesson, not just the teaching event itself, but also how it's embedded in these faculty conversations, planning and debriefing to evaluate the effectiveness of the instructional strategies on the student learning outcomes. So I will uh, now pause and we'll switch over to another couple of public lessons um, <coughs> having to do uh, also in fifth grade.